Hey again everyone, so uh, I want to take this video to talk about how to sketch a sinusoidal function from an equation. So we did an example in class, but I would like to have a video up, on, uh, up online just so that you guys you know, can come back to it. I know it's kind of a long process. So we're going to sketch y equals 2 times sine of 3 times x minus 30 degrees plus 1. Okay. First thing that we want to do is we're going to want to uh, recognize all the properties of this function. Okay, so we're going, to, we're going to list out some of these properties. So the first property that we're going to talk about is the middle axis. So the middle axis is pretty easy, if you recall. You can get that from the c value, which in this case is positive 1. So we're going to have y equals 1 for our middle axis. Okay, and that's one thing that we're going to want to show on our graph. So next, we're going to talk about the amplitude. So the amplitude, you might be able to remember, you can get from the a value. It's the absolute value of our a value. And our a value is 2 here, so our amplitude is just 2. Next, we're going to do the period. All right. So the period is a little bit more complicated. Right? It's based off of the regular sine and cosine functions. And you might remember that the sine and cosine functions, uh, like the basic ones, have a period of 360 degrees. Now, the period is going to be affected by the k value, because if you're stretching or compressing horizontally, right, that's going to change your period. Specifically, in this case, right, uh, our k value is 3. And what that means is that we're going to be compressing our function horizontally by a factor of one-third. And that means the, the period is going to become one-third of what it was. And since it was, you know, 360, if it's a regular sine function, then one-third of 360 is going to be 120. Or we can show that by doing 360 degrees divided by 3, right? So 360 degrees divided by 3 is 120 degrees. So our period is 123, uh, sorry, 120 degrees. All right, and our maximum value. So the maximum value occurs one amplitude's worth above the middle axis. Now our middle axis is one, and our amplitude is two. So we're going to go uh, two units above one, which puts us at three. And our minimum value, well, the minimum value occurs one amplitude's worth below the middle axis. So we want to go two units below uh, y equals 1, and that's going to put us at negative 1. Okay, so these are some of the properties that we're going to want to see in our graph. Right? It's going to help us out here to, to, to put these here, like to show them. We're going to see them in the graph, basically. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let me put up a grid or a scale, or our x and y axes. So there's our x and y axis. Uh, now, on our y-axis, we're going to want to see a couple of values, right? So specifically, we're going to want to see our maximum, our minimum, and our middle axis. So 3, 1, and negative 1, right? So I'm going to definitely put those there. Um, now, for my x-axis, uh, I want to know what I'm going to go up by. So I showed you a little bit in class how you might be able to do this. Uh, but essentially, what we need is a scale, right? And there's an easy way to kind of calculate what you could go up by with your scale. So um, we're going to be graphing this using key points. And I want you to remember that with the regular sine or cosine function, key points occur every 90 degrees. Now, again, since we're compressing this function by a factor of one-third, like we're horizontally compressing, that is, uh, we're not going to have key points occur every 90 degrees. We're going to have them occur every, you know, one-third of that, right? So this is how you can get the, the scale, okay? So the scale is going to be... 90 degrees divided by our k value, right? Well, actually, the absolute value of our k value. So we get 90 degrees divided by 3, which is 30 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to put uh, basically every 30 degrees I'm going to mark off on my x-axis, okay? And you might notice that I've actually also placed my middle axis up here, okay? So on the x-axis, we're going to go up every 30 degrees. So we have 30, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees, uh, 150 degrees, and 180 degrees, Okay, so I have my scale up there. Okay, so now we're just about ready to start graphing. The only thing we need to know now is to, uh, we need to know what the regular sine function looks like so we can kind of base our graph of that. So I'm going to draw in a regular sine function just down below. It's just going to be a quick sketch. So this is the regular sine function. Okay, so the sine function we know starts at the uh, x-axis, goes up to its maximum, goes back down to the x-axis, goes down to its minimum, and then goes back to its, uh, yeah, well, it goes back to the x-axis, okay? So it's going to follow that general pattern. We're going to use this to sketch our graph. So our graph is also a sine function, okay? It's got a positive a value, which means it's going to be oriented the same way. It's not going to be reflected, so it's going to start at its middle axis, just like the regular sine function. And then it's gonna, we're going to want to go up towards its maximum as its second point. However, 
what you need to consider is that we have a shift, okay? So in this case, we've shifted 30 degrees to the right, okay? And that means that our starting value is not going to be uh, on the y-axis, okay? It's gonna, we're going to have to shift it over 30 degrees, okay? So that means that our first point that we're going to apply is going to be above 30 degrees, and it's going to be on our middle axis, just like a regular sine function starts at its middle axis. Okay, so there's our first point on our sketch. Okay? All right, the second point. Well, again, sine typically goes up to its maximum value. So after another 30 degrees, so once we're at 60 degrees, that's going to have, uh, that's gonna, we're going to have a point at 3. So that's going to be up here. Okay, so then it's going to go back down to its middle axis after another 30 degrees. So that means that we're going to have a point right here. And then it's going to go uh, back down to its minimum value after another 30 degrees. So we're going to have a point right here. And then it's going to go back up to the middle axis right here after another 30 degrees. And then after another 30 degrees, it's going to go back up to its maximum. So I've sketched in a little bit more than one, one full period here. That's okay. Now, we started our first point um, at 30 degrees because we had a shift 30 degrees to the right, right? So we, we had that shift, we started our point there. Now, we can actually work backwards a little bit to go back to our x-axis. So we wanna consider, well, what, what point should be just before this one here, all right? Well, since that point is on its middle axis, right, it looks like that point should be down at its minimum value right here. So we're gonna put in a point at the minimum value there, okay? And now that we have a bunch of points, all we have to do is connect them with a curve. So let's connect them with a curve like this. There we go. Okay, so there is our curve. So this is a sketch of y equals 2 times the sine of 3 times x minus 30 degrees plus 1. So I hope this is useful when you're doing sketches on your own time. Come back to it whenever you need. Take care, guys.